Hey guys, welcome to the last video in the series. So in this one, we are going to be deploying our Flask application to Heroku. That way we can share a URL to other developers and they can build apps for our API. So to get started, we are going to need to first change a few things. One is we are going to need a Git repository. So Heroku uses Git to manage deploys. So you want to make sure you're using Git for local version control. And in our case, we are going to be using GitHub. So make sure you have a GitHub account that you can push your code to. So I'm going to be showing you a process on how we can do that. Now, here in my terminal, this is our project. And to iterate, we have the, the Danda init py file. So that is where our application lives. We have the create app factory function. So to get started, I'm going to stop the server here. Now, the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to first get a server that will serve our application on Heroku. So in our case, we are going to be using gunicorn. So I'm going to install it quickly here by doing pip install gunicorn. And that's going to go ahead and install it. So now we have that. So with Heroku, we can be able to customize how it, it runs our applications through using a file called proc file. So in the root of our projects, I'm going to specify a file called proc file. Now you can see that that has the Heroku badge on there. So what we need to change here is we need to specify the command that's going to run our application. Now, since we've installed gunicorn, we're going to be we're going to be making it run our application. So we'll do gunicorn. So you you type gunicorn and then you type a path to your application. So our path for now is uh, dender init. So what I want to do is here in uh, is here in our root. I'm going to create a file called runner.py, and this is going to be meant for just deployment. So here we can import our app. Okay, so here we can define app application equals create app. Then we are going to instantiate it because that is that is how it gets assigned to the app we want to run. So we want to run this application now with gunicorn, and we can do that by specifying a path. So in our case, it's going to be in uh, source.runner, then the application. So we can specify that by doing src runner full current then the name of our main application is called application. Test this one out. I'm going to copy this command and inside the terminal here, I'm going to paste it. So this is how Heroku is going to run this. Notice that when I paste the command here, the exact command that we want Heroku to run, we get a server started and by default, it's going to start on the default HTTP port. So in our case, we can see that when we run this, we get a gene con running and then we get this link here. So when I click this, you can see that it has the same version as our development server. Now, of course, when you're deploying, you want to also take care of some things. For example, if you had a DB you want to connect to on production, you would do that. But in our case, we are just going to keep our SQLite DB since we already have it. So we're going to commit it to Git and uh, we just keep it working like that. But you will have to have uh, like a database setup if you're using something that is called MySQL or Postgres. So now that we have this, the next thing we're going to need to do is to tell Heroku which dependencies our application needs. So I'm going to stop the server. Now, since we are using pip, we can use pip freeze to create a file that has our dependencies. So that file, we're going to call it requirements.txt. So if we do this, we get the requirements.txt file created and it has all our project dependencies. So now that we are done with that, then we can create a git repository for our project. Now, since we don't have any Git repository in initiated locally yet, we're going to start by creating it on GitHub because we're going to need to push to GitHub. So over here, I'm going to click new repository. I'm going to call our application bookmarker API. So once we have that, then I'm just going to create it. It's going to be public. And uh, this is where all the source code for the series is going to go by. Now that you've created it, I'm going to copy these default commands they give me. And to make it quick, I'm just going to put it here. So that's going to initialize a, a Git repository locally. And uh, it's going to push a default file, which is readme now. So if I refresh on GitHub, we should have the readme. You can see we have the readme. So the next thing I'm going to need to do now is to actually push our code. But like I was saying, we need to first also change our environment just so we can change that we are running. We are now running to in production. So what we are going to do here is the first app, we shouldn't mind it. Everything here is going to be used for, for development. Our runner process is going to be running our app differently since we set it up to use GUnicorn. 
So we can keep these and then in Heroku I'm going to show you how you can add them dynamically. So over here, now we are going to git checkout. I'm going to create another branch because I want this, I want this to come through a pull request. So I'm going to call this one deploy app. Then we can add the changes. So git add everything. So before we add everything, we have a .env file and we don't have a .git .git ignore file. So I'm going to go online here to dot git ignore git ignore dot io so this helps us to quickly create git ignore files for for the common technologies so here if i put in flask and click create you can see that we get like uh, a general dot git ignore file so let me create it here git ignore so i'm gonna bring in all this now let me remove this. So this should be able to hide our virtual environments and everything that should be sensitive. So if we do a git status, we should be able to see that we have all these files. Now we need to remove our .env, this main .env that has things we shouldn't commit. So over here we can remove it by doing git rm dash dash env. You can see it gets removed. So if we do a git status again, uh, you can see that it's gone. So now we can go ahead and add this change to the staging area and then commit everything. So git add git ignore and then let's add and then let's commit. So git commit minus m for the message deploy app. So now we can do a push to GitHub. So I'm gonna come over here and uh, use this setup stream just so all our subsequent pushes got this this branch so now i'm going to click on the create a pull request link and i'm just going to create it normally you want to fill out all this just so maybe you, if you need to check something in the future you can track back and see okay what was i thinking at this point in time so i'm just going to merge it for now if you get any issues we are going to come back and actually resolve them so now when we push to main, you can see that we have a requirements file which Heroku is going to need and also we have the we have the Flask env. Now for the Flask env, we are going to need to switch them in Heroku. So don't worry about these ones being here. So now in Heroku, we can come here and create a new app. So I'm going to call this one, how did you call it on GitHub? Let me check. Just want to make sure it is the same. Doesn't really matter. Just make sure you have a name and, and uh, if it's available then good for you so I'm just gonna say rest at the end then I'm gonna click create app so when we create app we can go to the deeper section we want to click connect to github if you're not logged if you hadn't authenticated before it's gonna tell you to log in so after you log in you're gonna have your, your accounts here and then we want to search for the one we want to deploy to so when I type in bookmarker API you can see that it comes through and then I can click connect. So when I click connect, it's gonna go and run. Now it gets the branches. Then we are gonna go ahead and deploy this branch. So I'm gonna go ahead and click deploy branch. And uh, then it's gonna go ahead and now start installing the things it needs. So it's gonna detect that we are running Python and then it's gonna go ahead and start installing things in the requirements TXE. So now that the deployment is done, we're gonna see that the app was successfully deployed. If we, if we click on view, it's going to open up in a new tab. And right away, you can see that we have a, a title that we would want to see. So that means our application was able to be deployed and it's being served. So after that, you're going to see that now it gets ahead to be rendered here. Now, things are not going to be working yet because we still need to do some config. For example, you see if I try to make a call, you can see that we get this error. In fact, I'm going to copy this and go to Postman. So in Postman, I'm going to make another request. It's going to be a post. So if we try to do this, you can see that we get a 500 and we actually don't get more errors since now we are running in a production environment. So what we need to do is to actually set up these environments. So the way Heroku does it is for the things we define in Flask env, they try to look for them in uh, their environment inside our Heroku. So to set the secret key, we need to have something that is uh, really secret and uh, that can be hard to guess. So I'm going to go to my terminal and then I'm going to use this utility that is provided on the first website. So what it does is basically import OS and then it uses OS to give us and then it gives us a 16 random string that you can use. So I'm just going to copy the this format here and then inside Heroku you want to go to settings 
So when you go to settings, then you will see config vars. So for this, then we need to set the keys. So this is going to be secret underscore key. Then the other things we need to set are the SQL Alchemy URL. So go back to Heroku. Let's add this. So let's set the SQL Alchemy DB URL. It's going to be the same because we can use the same. If you're using something like MySQL or Postgres, you're going to have your own DB URL. In fact, if you're using Postgres, Heroku kind of gives you the DB URL directly, even when you're deploy for the first time. And that's the one you want to put here. So let's go ahead and uh, also add our URL. So let's also add our JWT secret. So copy this. So for this secret, it can be anything. So this time we are not going to generate 16. Let's generate 8. So we get this. Uh, we we'll just copy any parts, any substring is okay. Just have something to work with. And now when we save this and we go back to our postman. So since they don't give us a lot of information, I'm going to go to the body and send like real data. So I'm going to click row, then I need to choose JSON. So then in here, now we can send the username. So let's have username as username. Let's have the password as the password, as the username, does it matter? Then for the email, just gonna have something that is invalid. So if I try to send this, notice that we get email is not valid. And this signifies that our API is actually working. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a valid email. So gmail.com, send this, username is taken. So let's use uh, username 56, send this. Now you can see user created. So we're just going to go to the login endpoint just to make sure that we can log in. And you can see that we can log in, we get the access token and the refresh token, meaning that our JWT secret key is being picked up. So I'm going to pick this. So I'm going to go to a new URL. And here I'm going to try to access the, I'm going to try to access the bookmarks. So those are on bookmarks. Now we need to send our JWT that we got on login. So I'm going to copy this here from access, then uh, in the auth, we want to pick bearer token, then we want to send our bearer token. Forget the one that was prefilled in mine, sometimes it gets prefilled, but just put your new one, so you can see that we get our results being sent back to us. If we go to body and do a poster, and uh, we need to post JSON of course, so we need to send a URL and then the body. So let's try to send this, so you get the URL is not valid. Now I'm just going to pick a random URL on the internet, so let me just get a random one. Let me pick this here. So I'm going to go to postman, let's send a URL. Here let me put flask docs. So if I go ahead and click send, you can start to get it created. Now if we go and do a get again, we can start we get it listed. So that means that our API is even working, even on prod. And also we have our short URL. So now if I went to our Flask app, if I went to our Flask app here slash this URL, and by the way, if you guys ever wondered how URL shorteners work, imagine, imagine we had a domain that was like abc.com. It would mean that we are able to translate any URL in two less than seven characters. So imagine we had like bookmarks API Heroku app was like abc.com. So that's how they do it. Now here, if we try to get this, we expect to be taken to this first config and that is what's happening. So our progression is up and running. There might be some things that are not working good. So if you guys ever find an issue, be sure to leave a comment and people are gonna be happy to take a look. So thanks guys for watching. I hope this was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to sub. I'll talk to you later.